Hey guys, it's me, Saren, back with another video. Um, this video is going to be one that's highly, highly requested. Uh, I know I put up, I already put up a reader request um, earlier in the week, but I have a lot of reader requests and I'm really, really trying to um, get through them. Um, so this is going to be a reader request video on um, Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture is a black owned uh, beauty brand that is owned by the parent company Sundial, um, and Sundial also uh, owns Nubian Heritage, which is also um, a beauty brand. They make soap and hair products and stuff like that. And Shea Moisture has been really, 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 really popular, um, especially with the natural hair community and the driving, you know, force behind the popularity of Shea Moisture has been black women. So black women are always like singing the praises of Shea Moisture and they've really allowed, you know, this company to expand from making hair products to body products and like soap and lotion and all different types of things. Um, it, they're sold in Target, you know, they're sold in your local beauty supply store. Like Shea Moisture right now is probably, you know, the number one um, beauty care line, you know, used by naturals right now. So last month... <laughs> Shea Moisture, via Sundial, their parent company, announced that they sold a minority share of their company, their Black-owned business, to Bain Capital, um, which is a corporation that was founded in part by Mitt Romney, <laughs> which annoyed a lot of people because a lot of people feel like Mitt Romney is a notorious racist. So a lot of people were saying like, oh my God, what the fuck? Like Shea Moisture, you know, sold out. They sold to Mitt Romney and this and that. Shea Moisture actually ended up releasing a statement where they said that Mitt Romney is no longer affiliated with the company and that he left the company in the early 2000s. But even though Mitt Romney left the company in the early 2000s, as one of the founding members of the company, he remains a majority shareholder. He owns stocks in the company, which is publicly traded, and he still makes a lot of money off of the company. So even though Mitt Romney is no longer involved in the company, and nor was he involved in the acquisition of, of you know, Shea Moisture, he's still going to be making money off of it. So a lot of people felt some type of way about that. Um, there was also a rumor going around that they sold the entire company of Shea Moisture to Bain Capital, which is not what happened. Sundial sold a minority share of their company to Bain Capital. Some people have said that it was 47%, but I haven't seen any, you know, actual details um, of the sale and of the acquisition on the internet. So I don't know how, you know, what the actual size of the share was. Like I said, some people are saying 47%, some people are saying less. They sold a minority share. But if it is true that the share was 47%, that means that technically it's a minority share, but really they sold about half of their company. But I don't want to say that that's what happened because I don't know for sure. But I do know that they did sell a minority share of their company to Bain Capital. And not only did they sell a, minor a minority share of their company, they also have brought on some new employees, I don't want to just say employees, but some new managers and some new policy makers from Bain, they brought them onto Sundial. And the reason why is expansion. They actually, after, you know, this news broke, there was a huge backlash and they ended up releasing this statement about it. Before I get into their actual statement, I want to say, full disclosure, I am not a fan of Shea Moisture. When I was a loose natural, I tried their products. I was never impressed. I actually preferred Nubian Heritage to Shea Moisture, um, Nubian Heritage, they sell a African black soap that I used to buy in Target, but then I actually just started going to like Nigerian spots and stuff like that to like just buy it straight from the source. Um, but I've never been a fan of Shea Moisture. I feel their products are kind of waxy. Um, they didn't do anything for my hair when I was a loose natural and, and now that I'm locked, I just prefer... You guys know I kind of prefer dealing with smaller businesses and things like that. But I know that Shea Moisture has been the go-to for a lot of people. So a lot of people were really concerned about this, which is why a lot of you requested that I make this video. So Sundial is worth $700 million. That is the net worth of their company. Last year, last fiscal year, 2014, I believe they earned $300 million, right? So their company, which was founded in 1992, so their company, which is about... 23, 24 years old, 
is, is almost a billion dollar company. It has rapidly grown, has rapidly expanded. And when I heard that they sold a minority share to Bain Capital, my first reaction was, so now you're $700 million corporation that has been black owned and family owned since 1992 is owned in part by white people. Why? For what? For what? What was the point of that? Sundial released a statement saying that, you know, while they appreciate their core consumer base of African-American women and they respect how African-American women have made, you know, rocking your natural hair, you know, acceptable. And, you know, we've, we've empowered women of all races. They made sure to throw that in. We've empowered women of all races to embrace their natural hair. That at the end of the day, they partnered with Bain to move their company in a direction that creates products with out ethnicity in mind, which is also why they began bringing on these employees from Bain to help them, you know, begin to market and merchandise their products without ethnicity in mind. Despite the fact that ethnicity is what made them rich, despite the fact that ethnicity is what got them $300 million last year alone, despite the fact that ethnicity is what made them, you know, a $700 million corporation in 24 years, right? It's kind of fucked up, <laughs> you know? It's kind of fucked up. We were actually talking about it in um, Bees Bake. Um, not Kingdom Come, but the one before that, Home. And somebody said, well, it's just business. Which I get. I get that it's good business to team up with a conglomerate like Bain in, you know, your mission for fucking, you know, world domination or whatever. You know, aka, you want to take Shea Moisture Global. You want to take Nubian Heritage Global. You want to take Sundial Global. I see how it's good business to have a major conglomerate like Bain, you know, backing you to kind of make your brand global. I get that. But why do you feel the need to publicly put out a statement saying that while you appreciate your black female customers, you want to move your company away from ethnicity, right? Your niche customers, aka your black customers, are not letting you down in any way, right? Those consumers are not letting you down in any way. It's actually quite the contrary. They have been lifting you up for the last 24 years. So why do you feel the need to issue a public statement, you know, cutting ties with them, right? They're not doing anything. They're not wronging you, right? Like, why do you feel the need to issue a public statement saying that you want to move your company away from being associated with ethnicity? It's a slap in the face and saying that it's just business is an excuse. This caters to the narrative that for something to be successful, it cannot be black centered. That's what we're talking about, right? Because we all know that ethnicity, you know, in this context is a code word for fucking black. It's a code word for black. And we only hear this type of thing when we're talking about blackness. You know, no one says we need to move associating pasta away from Italians. We need to move pasta. We need to move pasta sauce. We need to move noodles away from Italian ethnicity so that everyone will buy it. You never hear that type of thing. We need to move Chinese food away from Chinese ethnicity so that everyone will buy it, even though the Americanized version of Chinese food is like its own, you know, little monster hybrid creation. But you never hear that. This is something that really revolves around anti-blackness and this idea that for, for a business to be successful, it cannot, you know be associated with blackness in any way. Because how ridiculous would it be to say, you know what, we really want to, you know, market this pasta sauce. We really want to market these noodles worldwide. We want this to become a worldwide brand. So we need to strip it away from any type of Italian ethnicity. People would look at you like you were fucking crazy. Like, what are you talking about? But it's perfectly acceptable and good business to say that you want to strip the blackness away from your product right? No one ever says, let's stop putting those Italians on pasta sauce so white Americans can buy it. But they will say, you can't keep putting black people on your labels because white people aren't going to buy it. And that is really perpetuating racism and really supporting it and lifting it up. That's not, that's not, there's no type of pressure ever put on white people to be more empathetic, to understand that they can buy something that doesn't have a white face on it. You know, there's no type of pressure. All of the pressure, all of the onus of responsibility is put on us to make them feel comfortable. And it makes me fucking sick, to be honest with you. It really fucking disturbs me, right? Like, this idea of blackness 
and and black ethnicity as something that holds back a business fucking disgusts me. It's a very specific kind of anti-blackness. And to especially see it from this company of these people that are hundred millionaires, you're millionaires hundreds of times over in, in a very short amount of time, 24 years. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a spit in the face. It's a slap in the face. You might as well just spit in my fucking face, right? Like, Stop catering to this narrative that for something to be successful, it has to not be ethnic, right? AKA, you have to strip all the blackness away and cater to whiteness. Stop it. We've already, the success of Shea Moisture, AKA Sundial, has already proven that that's false. They're already a successful business, okay? So this is really just an idea, an idea that we have really ingrained in our society and ingrained in our brains, right? This excuse of it's just business is really an excuse to allow people to just continue letting this racism go unchecked because that's what it is. It's it's racist. It's just straight up racist. And we wave it away like, oh, that's business. That's how it is. Like, it's all fine and fucking excusable. And it's not. Like, people make new business plans and new business models every day. Like, especially with the advent of the internet and, you know, like slavery at one time was just business, okay? Like, this is not going to stop and it's not going to change until we start challenging, challenging, excuse me, this is an acceptable business model. It is not an acceptable business model. And I'm so over this excuse of it's just business it's just business it's just it's not just fucking business it's racist it's racist it's racist period you don't have to fucking strip all the blackness away from your product and issue a public statement saying you want to move your business away from ethnicity like that's trash like there is really this idea and this narrative that white people are only interested in things catered specifically to them and that white people are the ideal consumer that they matter and the rest of us don't and I reject I straight up reject that narrative like this is a free fucking market first of all you guys know that I'm anti-capitalism but we are living in a capitalist market we are living in a free market anybody can buy whatever they fucking want Okay, there are no signs on Shea Moisture that say for black people only. If white people want to buy those products, they fucking can. Okay, just like if I decide that I want to buy Pantene Pro-V, even though for the last 10 years they only had white women in their commercials, I can. Anybody can buy whatever they want. This idea that white people only buy or support things that cater to them and that white people are the ideal consumer and that we have to cater to them and that black people and other POC don't matter is gross. It's fucking gross and it's just constantly reinforced under the guise of it's just business and you literally see this idea everywhere in commercials, books, movies, TV shows, you know, th this notion when we start talking about diversity and representation, you know, there's this notion that it's bad business. It's bad business. It's bad business. It's bad business to have a too diverse cast. It's bad business to have a too diverse show. It's bad business to have books that don't feature white people. It's bad business. It's bad business. You know, that it's bad business to cater to anyone but white people and it's good business to include them and cater to them specifically. But this really just perpetuates the idea of white superiority, of whiteness as the norm, you know, of whiteness as the standard and that you know, they're the norm, we're other, we exist outside of the business world, and that we don't have to be fucking catered to, despite the fact that black Americans have a 1.1 trillion buying power, and that white, white, and that black Americans are by, by far, black Americans are the largest consumer base in this country. We spend more than any other demographic any other racial and ethnic base. We, we watch more TV, we see more movies, we use more internet and social media, we buy more goods, we consume more goods. If anything, black people are the ideal consumer and people need to start catering to us because what happens when you cater to us? You get a smash hit like Empire, which started out with 15 million viewers at the gate and went up every single week. And then the people, the analysts, throw their hands up in the air and say, I don't understand. I don't understand. Best Man Holiday comes out and is a smash success. And they throw their hands up in the air. I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, we are the ideal consumer base. And we don't give a fuck. We'll buy anything. We'll buy anything. Like, we don't care. Like, this is really a racist-ass, white supremacist-ass idea. And it really annoys me that people love to say, it's just business. It's just business. It's just business. It's just like shut up. 
It's not business, it's racist. And it really doesn't even make sense when black people are the number one consumers in this country, right? Like there's this idea that other races and black people in particular have to be mindless consumers, that we have to accept that white people are the norm in advertising and we have to keep buying these things that don't cater us to any way, right? We have to do it, you know? Meanwhile, white people have to be courted for their money and that courting them is good business because their money is worth more than ours because the white man's eye show is colder, right? Like it really reinforces this idea that they are the standard, that we are other and that they are better than us and that their money is worth more than ours, right? Again, despite the fact that we buy more goods, watch more TV, see more movies, you know, like it would be good business to court us. They need to court us. Sundial courted us for 25 years and they're worth almost a billion dollars it's it's bad business to move away from your niche market and and specifically cut ties with ethnicity when we're the ones that made you fucking rich like it's a slap in the face like it's a slap in the face and it's such a common slap in the face and this is such a common thing that we see over and over and over and over with these businesses with these actors and these actresses and these rappers and all these people that build these successful careers and then they reach a certain point and they say, oh, I've reached, you know, white people level now. I've reached white people money level now. So now I'm, I'm, now I'm real. Now I have my value because now I can appeal to white people and I don't care about that ethnicity anymore. And it's, and it's white supremacist bullshit. It's normalized white supremacist bullshit you know, that's been made, you know, normal under the guise of it's just business. And it's not. These business practices have to get challenged and exposed for the racist bullshit that they are. And we can't keep supporting these businesses. And we can't keep supporting these rappers. And we can't keep supporting these actors. And we can't keep supporting these people that don't support us and don't give a fuck about us, which is why I do Black Friday, which is why I don't watch shows that don't have diverse casts, which is why I don't go see movies that don't have diverse casts. Like, I just, I refuse, like, I reject that narrative 100%. I refuse. I really do. Um, so that's really what I think about this whole sundial thing. Like I said, I, I'm, I, I haven't been a fan of Shea Moisture. Like, I'm not a fan of Shea Moisture. So it didn't really hit me in my heart <laughs> the way that I, it hit a lot of other people. Um, but for those of you that did love Shea Moisture and you're maybe looking for some alternatives, I will have alternatives in the description box. Uh, Oyen Handmade, which I use in my house, which I did a Black Friday video on. It's awesome. They're excellent. I love their products. They have a huge range of products. Um, and they're also available at Target, Karen's Body Beautiful. This is just for people that want, you know, the ease of, of use. Like, you could get Shea Moisture anywhere. You could get it in Target. Like, you could get it, you know, wherever. So, Oyen is available in Target. Karen's Body Beautiful, which is black-owned, is available in Target. Um, I, th I think I have a list. Hold on. Let me see. I think I have a list somewhere. Okay, here we go. Uh, Oyen Handmade is available in Target. Alakay Naturals, which a lot of people have been recommending to me. I really want to try their stuff. They're available in Target. Karen Body's Beautiful, Karen's Body Beautiful, is available in Target. Um, Camille Rose Natural, which is black owned, is available in Target. A uh, black owned brand called Naturally Smitten is available in Walmart. And my three favorites um, brands that I'm using right now in my house, in addition to Oyen, which I use, I use Moni um, Moni Skincare, which is not available, you know in a Target or Walmart or anything like that, but you can order the products online. I'm absolutely in love with Ashley's Naturals. You can order her products online. And I absolutely love Naukado, which I've also done a Black Friday video on. And you can order those products online. So if you're looking for something that you can get easy, just walk into Target and buy, I would definitely recommend Oyen, Alakay, Karen's Body Beautiful, Camille Rose Natural, again, Naturally Smitten, which is in Walmart. And then I also have my favorites that if you're comfortable with ordering um, products online that I definitely recommend that you try. So all that info will be in the description box. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this whole Shea Moisture thing in the comments, you know. I just feel how I feel about it. I don't know. So it's white supremacist trash and I fucking hate it. So food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.